Under the watchful eye of Big Brother, Damascus is bustling. Restaurants and cafes are filled. Women enjoy considerable freedom. The markets are crowded. And one never gets lonely for a picture of the president, Bashar Assad, or for his long-ruling father, Hafez, whose thin mustache is as iconic here as the beard of Lincoln. Syria isn't quite on President Bush's axis of evil, but it's close enough. Syria's occupation of Lebanon, its alleged support of terrorism, and its lax control over a long border with Iraq bring it into frequent conflict with the United States. Although the ascent to power of the Western-educated Bashar gave hopes for a more open democratic society, the so-called Damascus Spring, the Syrian government is still filled with authoritarian minor bureaucrats, and a vast secret police keeps tabs on nearly everyone including Anwar al-Buni, one of the country's most prominent advocates of human rights. Buni is a chain-smoking lawyer and a tireless defender of almost anyone who gets into trouble for political reasons with the Syrian government. I do what I can. I don't say I, 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 I do a uh, big thing. Maybe it is very, very small thing. He's also part of a marginal but determined group of civil society advocates who say they need to prepare Syrians for democracy by creating a public space that is not controlled by the government or by militant Islamists. We spent several days with Albuni, his colleagues, and his clients in and around Damascus. They were happy to have us. Lawyers such as Albuni don't expect to win their cases before Syrian judges. The best they can hope for is that publicity in Western media will result in pressure on the Syrian government. Albuni took us to this poor Kurdish neighborhood. And he alone now, he haven't any uh, son. Nobody from his uh, child uh, help him now because all of them is a jail. They arrested them. Uh, Four of this man's sons were arrested during rare anti-government protests last March. The Kurds are mostly friendless in this region. Turkey hates them, so do many Syrians. Even among liberal Syrians, there is impatience with the Kurds, but not Albuni. The government arrested about uh, 1,000 people from this area. On October 31st, he'll defend Kurds arrested after a small riot in the northern town of Kamishli sparked a brief uprising and a heavy-handed police response. Everybody was sleeping. They break in. They hit. They hit the kids. They hit them, abused them, said their words, and took them by force. Hajjo Hamo Youssef's sons were taken from his house in the middle of the night. If they are convicted before the Syrian High Security Court, there's little likelihood that Youssef, who's dying of cancer, will ever see them again. It's a delicate cat and mouse game that people play in Syria, and that Syria plays with the world. At the international level, the U.S. threatens and controls and makes deals, which is, ironically, similar to the way this man, Mohammed Kamal al abwani was treated in Syrian prison. We had some times that we are allowed to read some books, and some other times we were forbidden from reading. He's a doctor, a writer, a critic of the government, and an amateur painter. We spent two years and a half in, in, in such a cell. Although he was placed in solitary confinement, he was also given materials to paint. He thinks it was because the authorities hoped to use his paintings against him, as evidence. They took 25 of his canvases, but not this one, which shows Charlie Chaplin and other people with vision problems. Bashar Assad was trained as an ophthalmologist. From the outside, for an American, these men may remind you of men like Thomas Paine or Benjamin Franklin. But they want nothing to do with that comparison. The United States is highly supporting, or it seems, it, it is highly supporting the human rights issue. So if we are sympathizing with the United States, we are accused as being collaborators with the United States. Because of its support for Israel, America has such a bad reputation here that associating ideas of liberty and reform with American ideals is dangerous for these advocates. Without democratic society, you cannot speak about human rights. Democracy is, in many ways, synonymous with outside agitation and American hegemony, and even the word makes advocates suspect to many Syrians. 
And after the war in Iraq, which is widely perceived here to have been a disaster, resulting in chaos on Syria's borders, advocates of a more free Syria don't want cataclysmic sudden change. For inspiration, people here look to Europe, not the United States. The last stop on Al Buni's tour of distant Damascus was the office of Ad Damari, a brief-lived independent newspaper that was very popular before the government shut it down in July 2003. <laughs> At 10 o'clock, they suggested to close our place, and at uh, 11 o'clock, the Prime Minister and the Minister of Information signed the agreement of closing our uh, newspaper. Like the painter Al Abwani, Ali Farzat was looking for a space to get a message out. His newspaper may not have been agitating directly for democracy, but it was an effort to hold the government accountable for its promises and failures. And it was an effort to begin what human rights advocates here call a basic reform in people's thinking. Some of my drawings. Farzat survives in Syria because he is also a famous cartoonist. One of his drawings is inspired by Irish playwright Samuel Beckett's existentialist play, Waiting for Godot. This cartoon was penned well before the famous Damascus Spring that ended in summer of 2001. But it captures the frustration of people like Farzat and Al Buni and Al Abwani. Democracy is a train that hasn't yet come, on a track that isn't yet complete. Waiting for it is futile. Trying to force it along is dangerous. Working for it is, above all, a lonely business.